opening. We have an eye, sort of a nostril, two teeth. One of the teeth has a small cavity. Close call, folks, but I think we got here just in time. Presented by Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. This is Anatomy of a Movie. In-depth discussions and breakdowns of various movie titles. And now that you've seen the movie, let the dissection begin. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for another Anatomy of a Movie. This week being Valentine's, we'll be doing an open heart surgery. Going back in the past for <laughs> Shakespeare in Love. I'm John Comerford. I'm joined on the big panel by Marissa Serafini. Hello, everyone. Sarah Stratton. Hi, guys. Dimitri Panos. Happy Valentine's Day. All right. Does everybody remember back to 1998 when this came out? I do. Because I have notes right in front of me. <laughs> of course. Yes, you would. As you would. I kind of remember it being in theaters, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Really the young. music is swelling. Do you, are you feeling it? Are you, Just getting it wrapped into up in the emotion. I am wrapped. Yes. I'm, I'm swelling in love. Yes. <laughs> Wait. Close. <laughs> All right. So, uh, well, uh, I thought this was a nice choice for us. Why not? You know, it's Valentine's week, so. This yeah. is probably one of my favorite romance movies of all time. I mm-hmm. do not remember seeing this in theaters. I do not think I was allowed to <laughs> see <laughs> it when it was in theaters. You uh-huh. um, so I found it after, and mm-hmm. I probably found it in around high school. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of when I was also getting into Shakespeare, and I just fell in love with this movie. Um, I'm still in love with this movie. It's probably one of the m- like most frequent movies that I revisit. So wow. I'm very happy to be talking Marissa, about do you, today. Do you like this one at all? I can't remember. I love <laughs> this movie. I have probably watched Shakespeare in Love about four times in the last year already. Wow. And then, but... Is that I'm, since January or is that in the past 12 in months? the past <laughs> six months, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love the story of Romeo and Juliet and I got into... Romeo and Juliet in high school because we were forced to read That's it. That's when but everybody I gets loved into it. it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I discovered Shakespeare and Love around the same time, and it just really hit me, and it's it stuck with me, and I've loved it ever since. Well, Dimitri, cool. chime in here. Uh, yeah, I I appreciate the movie for what it is. I don't I don't herald it as one of the mm-hmm. greatest romance movies of all time. I do show it, especially, and I should say this. I just watched the movie last night. Mm-hmm. First time I've seen the movie since I saw it in theaters in 1998. Mm-hmm. So to me, it always goes as the movie that stole the Academy Award for Best Picture from <laughs> Sam and Cry <laughs> Ryan. I thought I was bitter about it, but that's no. what it always went down as. And uh, you know, I'll talk about that later. So revisiting the movie and, and going in that it's Valentine's Day mm-hmm. and, and I recognize the romance in the movie, but to me, it, I was like, wow, I'm really surprised as to how much a farce it plays on the movie business. Mm-hmm. I know nothing about mm-hmm. producing a play, right. you know, outside of uh, Biala Stock and Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I, f- but the movie aspect yeah. of the producer mm-hmm. and, and don't they get back end? Oh, sure. But what if we make no, no money? <laughs> it's like, well, great. <laughs> Even yeah. better. Mm-hmm. So all that stuff I really liked. And but then I noticed that the movie was more about writing the play and putting the play on i found most of the emotional stuff came from when romeo and juliet was being played out and 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 the 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 birth of it the origin of it mm-hmm. the way that this movie supposes that it happened mm-hmm. that i really enjoyed the romance you get involved with it but you know at the end they don't end up together there's no particular reason like other than the well, queen says, romeo and juliet so yeah well but but there's a reason why they mm-hmm. don't end up together <laughs> um i do like the little shakespearean nods like you know the miscommunications yeah. and, and things like that mm-hmm. so i you know i appreciated I, I had a reappreciation of the movie uh and then you know researching and looking at what, it, what the other things that it won like costumes mm-hmm. you get it mm-hmm. you, you understand why the production design on it was fantastic and then something else i noticed was the editing to it mm-hmm. i thought was very smooth and flaw and i was like wow this movie was edited put together 
very well and yeah well, so i appreciate it for has all a those. huge flowing presence i mean yeah. you walk away feeling the romance not only for me i do feel it between the characters mm -hmm. but you get this adaptation that to me is technically skillful and that the shots do flow that there's like a warmth and there's fabric and there's feathers and just the design of it is wonderful and it adds to that romance along with the movie and then mm -hmm. on top of that there's so much intellectual property that they're grasping and twisting and to me it exists in these layers where they do direct references where they're also showing scenes mm -hmm. and then there's also the whole other section where you can see his plays just in subtle characters mm -hmm. whether it be like the merchant in venice being you know broke and having to look for a dowry and you get that with her right. fiance it's just all over the map and yeah. to put so much in a film and I know there was a comment about like they thought that it was almost going to be too smart for the audience. But I think people really enjoy that. They enjoy yeah. being able to watch it over and over again and be yes. reminded very of all the different things. And that's what I really love it, that it captures the multi-layer. It's technically and visually pleasing. And then on top of that, I do feel a love story in it. So Yeah, there's a love story. Like I said, mm -hmm. in all that, you don't even have to be that well versed in Shakespeare I think to no. enjoy this movie mm -hmm. um, you know you'll you'll get Merchants of Venice or you won't yeah. you'll you go along with the story it flows pretty evenly and then hell if somebody had watched it in 1998 or today and maybe it um, encouraged them to pick up and read Shakespeare you mm -hmm. know hey that, that Billy Shakespeare he could be a big writer someday yeah. you know eh. <laughs> he doesn't suck he doesn't suck yeah so um, if he yeah. existed one yeah that's true if he even wrote him <laughs> if he even wrote him if we're yeah. gonna believe the conspiracy theory and they may not and they make nods even to the conspiracies in yeah. this movie and mm -hmm. I find that yeah bringing Marlo in and, and the exactly. fact that he had somebody else write it for him because he's got great penmanship I mean uh, yeah. that's what I thought was great about this yeah. as everybody's already talked about I thought it was well crafted because it not only spoke to the the conspiracies about Shakespeare, but also it brought in the whether it's theater or film, the whole thing and the behind the scenes and all uh, all that and the shenanigans that go behind there, as well as it, it informs the audience of what is involved in the artistic process, yeah, and what the muses are, what's the inspiration for this or that, and it's. Uh, not only is it very specific to Shakespeare, it's very general for anybody who's in the artistic process. You sure. you, you don't know where all those things come from, and they find their way into your work. Mm -hmm. And that part I love. I, I agree the artistic process and the, the whole behind the scenes of the theater production because mm -hmm. I've done a lot of theater, and just knowing what that's like and having going through those bad auditions mm -hmm. and then getting all these roles that somehow turn into something else yeah. and then all all these things that even when you're going live on stage and you're actually performing it in front of everyone things change and you just have to go with the flow mm -hmm. and right. then one, like, one of my favorite moments is jeffrey rush when they say well how's it gonna work out i don't know it's a mystery it's a mystery, it's a mystery. It, is. Yeah. it really is yeah. and somehow it does yeah. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. the, and that's the beauty of theater mm -hmm. and yeah. i love it i i like you know another one of my <laughs> is uh, on the pamphlet like oh yeah yeah okay. yeah so i mean <laughs> but <laughs> but you know but 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 today you know and, and i don't it could have been for i mean it could have been foreshadowing or mm -hmm. their, their foresight into the you know you go to the movies today and it's 10 minutes of a sky dance production of yeah. an anna perina film yeah. brought to you by village road show but mm -hmm. by sideshow collective yeah. presents a mm -hmm. warner brother film <laughs> and yeah. all, that's all I was thinking of. Yeah. I'm like going, that's actually sort of brilliant mm -hmm. considering mm -hmm. that was 1998. Yeah. And uh, I, I like those little touches. Yeah. And again, for me, it was more of the creative process. Mm -hmm. It was more of that was the emotional, mm -hmm. like, you know, when, when um, Gwyneth Paltrow shows up yeah. to, 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 to play. To audition. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, that was not to audition. Like at the party. end, like when, when, at the end, like when they're to putting the play on and, oh, playing and she plays Juliet, mm -hmm. like you're like everybody was. It's like that's an emotional moment because the play is going to go on, you know, mm -hmm. and, and little things like the show must go on and not only go on, but go on in the proper yeah. nature that we want to yeah. see it. Right. Like not the initial plan that they set in stone, but how almost like fate would have it or would the right. ideal situation and that's what ends up going up in front yeah. of the audience yeah. and so it just adds mm -hmm. adds even more that she ends up playing her in a way herself exactly oh, yeah. and then even beyond that because mm -hmm. beyond the shipwreck she's playing, playing viola now i mean yeah. I, I mean it's yeah. just so well crafted and well layered yeah. that you could watch I, and i've enjoyed it many times since 1998 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so I, I and I find myself as I watch it, I go, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I, I don't have time. Oh, oh, I love the scene. <laughs> oh wait, 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 yeah, we, I can't wait for him to say. It. And, and wait, I just give it another minute because yeah. there's a really good line. Exactly, yeah. and, and, and I, and I find myself this. being charmed by it all over again and wanting to watch it. And yeah, sticking and, through it. And um, let's, you know, I think one of the uncredited performances that that is, or not, he's credited, but he's not given a much. He's not given as much. Uh-huh. Credit due. Ben Affleck is fantastic oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah. this movie. He's what hysterical. Is okay, and what, what is, is my pop? pop? <laughs> well, originally he was approached Gwyneth for the role, boyfriend, and that's why he did <laughs> yeah. decide to Disney. But he was also approached to play Shakespeare for this film really? instead of just the side note. Yeah, mm. um, or it was like mentioned as they were searching and wow. almost in did vain. Not know that. But Thank even you, his sir. character, and even Ned had added to the story because yeah. he it was his suggestion to change the right. name to Romeo mm-hmm. and Juliet and then it was his suggestion to write in the 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 love scene in between marriage and right. death and mm-hmm. so it, even his small character was still relevant yeah, yeah. I think, mm-hmm. you know, because you see him he starts out being this guy that just wants his part his grandiose uh, event then he realizes he starts to get sucked into the mm-hmm. art of it as well yeah. and says no no, no it needs yeah. this suffering cat yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we enjoy that. Well, yeah. there's it's chock full of like f- fantastic actors. I know when, the other day when we were talking about Philomena, Judy Dench got her yeah. nod to mm-hmm. this film. Um, mm-hmm. Also, obviously from the Academy, winning for I think it was she won for what is it eight uh, minutes? Twelve. I think it was it no, it was under eight. Really? Eight mm-hmm. minutes. I thought it was twelve. And okay. the short and the only person who beats her for winning is um, someone won for a six minute piece. Wow. So she's like the second shortest. Best it's a good gig. Wow. Supporting actress nominee. Yeah, it's impressive. Or it's, yeah. it's power. Yeah, it's power. It's really being able to convey. Or it was stolen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who do you think it was stolen from? Uh, our, that our residents. <laughs> I mean, well, again, it's 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 an eight minute performance, mm-hmm. and she's great. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. I, I, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, but where did how does Okay, throughout the entire movie, do you really believe that she snuck into that theater at the end and nobody noticed her? <laughs> she sort of kind of just shows up at the end of that. <laughs> it was like, whoa, how'd the queen Hello. get here? It's like, yeah. It's like, well, I think the, but, that, but that's speaking to how wrapped everybody was in the performance in the, of the show. Yeah. Nobody which saw it because they were so in tune with Justification. Hood Roman. That's right. <laughs> yeah. that's, what I'm, that's how good the play was. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, you got the preacher that's now crying. Just the preacher was funny too, <laughs> yeah. because again, that happens today. You know, mm-hmm. you get the religious right mm-hmm. going against movies and whatnot, mm-hmm. and yeah, the, yeah. I mean, those are the touches that for me made the movie enjoyable to to, mm-hmm. to watch again. And these are, again, having so many years between seeing mm-hmm. it again, and in a sense, being able to watch it fresh. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are the parts that I that I really enjoyed, and and. Uh, uh, John Madden's uh, direction was really good. I mean, everything on that picture worked. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't think many of the people like John Madden after that hasn't really amount. You know what I'm saying? Like, so all those people that worked on that movie collaboratively, mm-hmm. from set design to costumes to it worked in that movie mm-hmm. like really well, very well. And it was also one of those just situations that I mean, I was just reading about the cast and how they felt about each other. And although this movie took a long time to get on its feet, which I'm Mm -hmm. sure we'll get into, once it did and was in the shooting process, the three months of actual shooting, the cast was so happy with each other and having such a good time that they literally, some of them were concerned that the movie would flop. Because you're having too good of a time. Because you're just having such a wonderful time that it it can't be any good. Bad dress. (laughs) And Good uh, open. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, it turned on its head. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, it going back to your thing, uh, yes. Uh, the second shortest performance to win mm-hmm. uh, under eight minutes. The shortest ever performance was by Beatrice Strait in the movie Network, 1976. Oh, wow. She appeared on film for only six minutes. Wow. See, so Beatrice see, Strait, you can get an award off six minutes. Right. So, so Beatrice be Strait opened up this can of worms yeah. back in 1976. It, so, I don't know that it, it's much of a can of worms. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know... I, it's it, it, you know it, but it, it comes it to gives question. Us hope. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, it gives you hope, but I mean, it, it also comes to question about best supporting. Like, what uh, is what's the definition of best supporting well, exactly. actor? That actress? is that there. It's not like, like there's a time limit on right. it right now. There's no no. I, Go ahead. I mean, I just but think six that, minutes is shorter than most of the shorts mm-hmm. that are nominated for best live action I don't short disagree. film. <laughs> I mean, but also you have to think about the other end, like 
when you come from like a theater background mm-hmm. where they do tell you that like it doesn't matter no if parts. yeah there are no small parts only like mm-hmm. small actors whatever the cliche but yeah, it's true but it's right. like you're supposed to be invested even mm-hmm. as an ensemble even if you have one line and not to overdo it but to just really be real and truthful because it's just about the focus so mm-hmm. i think that it just seems, it just proves that notion mm-hmm. that you don't need to be in half the film or in every scene because sometimes the supporting actors still are in every scene pretty no. much yeah, yeah. and yeah. It, if you think about it judy dench's character queen elizabeth when every every time she came on the screen everyone was forced to bow down to her so we as an audience were forced to pay attention mm-hmm. to her as well and i think that was another factor that helped us like really pay attention to her acting and her character and what she added to right. the story mm-hmm. so that helped with probably her nomination the, there was an underlying like psychological yes. like oh you oh, must like, like her cause we have, have to pay attention to her <laughs> <laughs> they're just guiding so basically if you want to win anything don't go in films for a long time and be very powerful people that people are intimidated by mm-hmm. and you will win just by psychological nature <laughs> no, and, That's and, what I'm or have some sort of this. physical and, affliction and, and because we because we had asked uh, so we had for best supporting actress that year mm-hmm. uh, Judy Dench obviously Kathy Bates for primary colors uh, Lynn, Gray, Lynn Redgrave for Gods and Monsters, mm-hmm. uh, Rachel Griffiths for Hillary and Jackie, mm-hmm. and Brenda Blethyn for Little Boys. Mm-hmm. All nice. worthy nominations yes. for, sure. for, for, for that mm-hmm. uh, for that year. And then, if you want another interesting 1998, yes, we do trivia for Shakespeare in Love and Judy Dench. Uh, 1998 was the only year that two actors were nominated for Academy Awards for playing the same character in two different films in the same year. So you had Dom Judy Dench was nominated and won for Best Supporting for playing Queen Elizabeth in the movie, and Kate Blanchett was nominated for Best Actors portraying Elizabeth uh, in Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. 1998. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that to me is like fascinating. That is all very that stuff. interesting. Yeah. And- it's like who did it better? <laughs> yeah, and you it's also worth it says also worth noting that Joseph Fiennes portrayed the love interest in both of these films. That Jeffrey Rush was nominated for mm-hmm. a BAFTA award for his performance in each, winning for Elizabeth. Wow, <laughs> those English they they just yeah. keep hiring themselves mm-hmm. uh, in, in well, these they British do. movies. I mean, they do. Works. They're always in they, these movies. You know, and they had amazing cast in this. Yeah. It was just everywhere, every every character. I mean, every p- small mm-hmm. part, so to speak. It's like, oh my God, they got him for this thing. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it was, it was fun people. to see Tom Wilkinson yeah. too. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. Put he was Jeffrey's feet to the fire. It was yeah, brilliant. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I put you. And I feel like the group that they ended up with this movie is just so fitting for it. Yeah. Um I mean, the original cast and was really first put into its initial push for mm-hmm. production is Julie Roberts instead of Gwyneth Paltrow, and from there. She wanted Daniel Day Lewis to play her Shakespeare, and then that fell through. And we had people like, oh, Kate Winslet was mm-hmm. up for the role. And I think that just almost there's such a, a kindness that these two characters have. Mm-hmm. I feel like between Gwyneth Paltrow and Joseph Fiennes, and but also a sense of comedy and sense of sense of passion for the words. I think that was really important to make this movie because Shakespeare is literally all about the words um i mean that's what the, i think it's one of the most popular things to ever say that you can literally just listen to the audio and you will get everything because every emotion is written down you don't i do, you it's like sometimes they say in, in film it's you know you catch the emotions in between just in the looks and the close-up mm-hmm. and for shakespeare it's so much the focus the tension is in what they say and i think that they carry that through in this movie, which was really important to me, as like a Shakespeare. Yeah, lover. and it just seemed to. I mean, I don't know if this has been if this has ever been said of Shakespeare. Not that I'm a Shakespearean historian, mm-hmm. but he wrote for the cheap seats. He wrote for people that he was really couldn't exactly see. They were right. well, commercial ventures. Let's yeah, put it that way. Yeah, but they, they were so. the, the penny. The right. petty stand, but it was also it was also the air the time. Right. I mean, now we're such a visual culture, but in the time of Shakespeare, it was total audio culture. Like it wasn't. Yeah. Not everyone was literate. Everything was spoken. Like the average amount of words they used in speech was like triple the the vocabulary we use today. So like, which is because they didn't have text or Twitter <laughs> yeah. or Instagram no, or but it was LOL in- or. <laughs> 
But yeah, it was, they didn't have it, that. It was they, more they than that. Like you people. were, you, you were always communicating through language. Like you didn't have things to write That's what down. I'm saying. You were always memorizing things. <laughs> right. Exactly. So it makes sense that why all of his effort and emphasis yeah. was on that. So, oh, the other thing too that I found of note that that hmm. that's still relevant, prevalent today too is, uh, and again, I just, I and again because I don't have a theater background, it's more hmm. movies. Hmm. Is the the treatment of women. And, you know, giving women larger roles and bigger. I mean, that is something that is being talked about even still today Mm -hmm. within within movies. I I don't know about theater, you know, and then when you have the Gwyneth Paltrow's character and and there aren't enough stronger roles for what we need, you know, and then she comes on and they're going to shut the theater down. And like that to me, I can't even imagine a day when. Like there was, like you know, you had that guy playing the maid who was hysterical, <laughs> and you know, but all the Carson played- from <laughs> Down <Downton> Abbey, <laughs> and it's just it was, uh, it's an interesting period to look back because mm-hmm. historically, even though the the events in this movie may not be like accurate, but going to the theater, mm-hmm. they definitely depicted it so much mm-hmm. so that Judy Dench, the theater that they mm-hmm. in the roast, built. Yeah. She she wanted to she bought it built so that it could be used as a theater, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Yeah. Did it ever get reassembled and used? Because I know she was given it for after the production, and she was trying to create a playhouse for mm-hmm. students. But I don't know if it ever actually got accomplished. I couldn't figure it that. I found that that she just bought it and wanted to use it. It was so detailed and. But where and, do you put it? I feel like, just it's like right where it is. Just have it stand. <laughs> like I just have this big theater. It's just chilling in my backyard. But I mean, she's Dom Judy Jen. She probably lives in uh, the Wayne Manor it's, over there, <laughs> somewhere in London, next yeah. to the pickle. I think. There we go. Yeah. yeah. But we'll yeah. I, I love the the aspect of the Rose Auditorium that they had there because that's very similar to what they used back in the Elizabethan mm-hmm. era and the the acoustics that they had because it was round and it right. made it sound better when people projected right. on stage and it, and even the the you know just having all that and the the writing that goes into it because and the turnaround for the plays back back then they would spit mm-hmm. these plays out in a week and 12th night yeah, yeah they <laughs> the writing the process is so fast for nowadays we have more time to like right. really build upon production but back then it was like a new play every week it was if something people demanded and yeah. something people loved and so all these actors would have to learn all these lines in a matter of days yeah. and th- just that talent back then is amazing mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean i i did like the depiction um you know and it was very colorful and Again, for for winning like production design and stuff like that, oh, you, you just go, well, yeah, of course. I mean, it looks it was beautiful. It was lush when it needed to be, and and the construction going into it was fantastic. The costumes were were amazing, and to see it, you know, on a decent, good size mm-hmm. HD TV, and you see the colors and the and the stitching, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, yeah. I, no yeah, here's the thing about that is I have no idea how authentic they were to the time. I have no idea. I just don't, no idea. I don't, yeah, 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 I'm with you. They were amazing. They look great. And yeah. I was like, oh, wow, look at that. Because you, you just <laughs> feel like you feel like yeah. they have their categories, like who is both. It just mm-hmm. works very well yeah. without feel, and it feels real. It doesn't mm-hmm. feel like, oh, this is supposed to be period. You're just like, oh, I'm here and it's wonderful, mm-hmm. but it's crisp and. I also like how muddy they, and dirty they made. And like, yeah. You know, <laughs> yep. yeah. walking through everything. It's just. Yeah, and his I, I fingers agree. are all just. Oh yeah, his fingers are all yeah. inky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they just yeah. did, they just did yeah. all that kind of stuff. I yeah. love that. Uh, what was it? Uh, does anybody know? Uh, I didn't look it up, but he would throw. It almost seemed like cornmeal on onto his pages. Oh, okay. And, so the ink and, doesn't. So dry. the ink doesn't run. Is, is that what yeah, it was? So that, that's run. for yeah, yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. I thought that that well, that whole thing was mm-hmm. yeah the whole. That aspect of the movie I really liked a lot, mm-hmm. and the, the whole process of the play and his muse. Like you're yeah, right. I mean, is. to me, this yeah. really is about the muse mm-hmm. and finding that inspiration to write these words. And mm-hmm. and if it's love that does it, then that's fantastic, mm-hmm. and that's what's proven here. But that process is mm-hmm. what, to me, makes this this journey fun for, for for me. Yeah, I enjoyed it, and I had no qualms like Gwyneth Paltrow. Like she was really, I mean, she's still an attractive woman, but God, going back, going, wow, she was really attractive back then. She was, you know, but she was very good. And this also started, though, if you remember, this also started yeah. like she wouldn't do a movie without an English accent. 
Yeah. But she had a string of movies. Uh, I don't. She I, had a lot I don't know. If she wouldn't. Is that was that the thing? I know that she did, but I don't. She did a well, no, I, she, she did, did Emma. It's almost like she, it was in her contract. Emma, yeah. Possession, <laughs> yeah. uh, mm-hmm. sliding, sliding Doors. doors. Like yeah, she yeah. did all these movies in the late nineties. I'm just wondering if that's what you got <laughs> offers. <laughs> like, okay, I'll do another one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I thought it was written yeah. in her contract. Okay, <laughs> but I, I hadn't heard know. that one. But she did it well. No, she did. Yeah, she did. Didn't have a problem with that. Although I believe she is from California. I know. Yeah. So. No. Switch and switch. Yeah, she was good. Yeah, no, she's very good. And but everybody stepped up to the plate. You know, um, I, I I can't point to a performance in that movie and say, boy, they're they're, yeah. they're bad. Yeah, they're no one dropped good. the ball on it. Yeah. Wasn't like we went, oh boy, no. yeah. Shoot. yeah. And I like think that on get, yeah. yeah, I think it was like every character had a purpose, even yeah. as small as John Webster, yeah. that, like mm-hmm. who we know he came out to be an awesome playwright as well and just like the little people here and there they still had a point they yeah. had relevance mm-hmm. that was yeah. like no intellectual yeah, property no no one was Sometimes. a throwaway character <laughs> yeah even uh tilda uh, tilda swinton yeah that you know i mean i'm watching the movie and i'd forgotten she was in it and i was like going i'm forgetting who she was in it she was now. the maid isn't that t- not not tilda oh, no, that's uh, Imelda no. uh, Imelda Imelda. Imelda. Oh, okay, gotcha. she was the maid and, nurse, and i'm looking the at her the, the nurse and i'm like going why, that, why do I know her? She looks really familiar. And then she was Harry in Harry Potter. Potter. And I'm like going, but she was so funny in this movie, so evil in Harry Potter, but mm-hmm. she was great. It's like, where's my Romeo? He's dead. <laughs> and I'm like, that's that's great. That that part just yeah. cracks me up. And she was, uh, again, it just proves how everybody was so engaged mm-hmm. on that, in, in the play. So it, it was working. It, yeah, it was hard for me to watch Harry Potter knowing that she came from Shakespeare because I'm like, she, she's such a mean person in Harry Potter. I know. And she's such a lovable person in Shakespeare. Yeah. I had a hard time like yeah. going back back and forth between her, but she was great. I and loved, she's her I ally her. throughout the whole, yeah. Yeah, which mm-hmm. is great too. Because know, so. in the story of Romeo and Juliet, uh, Romeo, I mean, Juliet's, you know, best friend essentially is the nurse. And yes. I love the connection, how they built upon mm-hmm. that in this movie too. What I liked about this movie also is that the flavor of it approached um, Shakespeare in an interesting way. It wasn't like, let's be extremely like serious and straightforward because this is something we've built up for centuries and need to respect. It was like, let's approach Shakespeare in a fun mm-hmm. and caring and loving way that we can... And peel back the curtain on it a little bit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Me, was, was like, mm-hmm. And we did, they didn't put it on a pedestal yeah. they used all of his works they played with sure. it they yeah they talked about controversies they or like yeah. hinted at them and it was it was fun and it really stretched back to the line of like all you need for a comedy you know is, yeah. a, is a dog and you don't you need all these little aspects and it can be drama but it can still be the kooky people who are going mm. to dress in, as other people and he's going to be a nurse and who knows well even how the 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 mo- the play behind the movie started was which was Romeo and Ethel the Pirate the Pirate King. King. Yeah. Like, what <laughs> what and then yeah. that, how it trans you know it transgress not transgress but how it uh, moves along Morph, and, yeah. and morphs into whatever I mean I just thought that part was hysterical and that and in doing so we got to see the evolution of mm-hmm. uh, not only the artistic process but you know how sorry so sorry how it might happen <laughs> for others and stuff like that. Uh, but I think the, but, the other thing too that it does for Shakespeare is it made him accessible. Mm-hmm. You know, you you can go into Shakespeare and love, and again, mm-hmm. not have much not education, no and yeah. right, and you will find the movie entertaining. Yeah. I think, you won't feel yeah. like you're being there as an education, and it's not like watching like a a remake of Romeo and Juliet mm-hmm. and and and. What not? You can go there, mm-hmm. understand the dialogue, the language, and it makes it very accessible that, that to an audience. That goes to what Sarah was saying. Yeah. We put it on a pedestal, and and the other thing we've already mentioned is that he wrote for the masses. Right. That's what they understood at the time. And, and these days, we go, oh my god, it's so hard it's to get. Like, right. No, no, it's actually written. It's a popular, a populist uh, mm-hmm. storyline. Right. So, but you know, it's kind of like Neil Simon. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of yeah. the day. I no, mean, that's I, the same yeah. thing. John Lennon and, exactly. and Paul McCartney. Yeah. 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 Different in Tilburg. Also, Queen Elizabeth as herself, she loved these plays. So right. it was kind of mm-hmm. in demands from her that she wanted to see all these things as well. And then it was just something that was a it was a cultural thing. Everyone mm-hmm. went to go see it. It was like everyone watches movies now. Everyone mm-hmm. went to go plays yeah. back then. Right. So, so. Yeah, and, you know, and again, the movie made $100 million you know, at the box office in 1998. And so 
Do we have an idea? That, what the, do we know the budget is? Yeah. Well, let's see. I I got around sixty five million. Yeah, I get mm-hmm. production budget at about twenty five. So the total budget mm-hmm. around sixty, which makes which makes sense. And then um, you know it it opens up uh, on December eleventh, nineteen ninety eight. Uh, it opened up on only eight locations, and it did two hundred and twenty four thousand dollars at that point. So that's actually. That means word had gotten out. That's not bad because it's mm-hmm. a decent per screen average, and to date the total gross is uh, over a hundred million dollars. A hundred, a uh, hundred million three hundred and seventeen, seven hundred and ninety four dollars is what it's done. Damn. So How many a Oscars? lot of money and a lot of awards. Seven, yeah. seven, seven Oscars, Oscars. and I yeah. think thirteen nominations. Was it? Um, thirteen, um, and Damn. it was one of the only movies. Um, ever in mm-hmm. Oscar history to win for Best Picture and I think and get that amount of Oscars Seven but Oscars. not Seven. get Best Director. Poor John mm-hmm. Madden. Yep. It's like yeah. <laughs> just get, keep standing up, keep throwing people up there. <laughs> yeah. John Madden still sitting. Yeah, but you have to understand that, that, that movie was not the movie that was that was not the favored movie that year at all. Like like I wasn't joking when when I said it's the movie that stole the Academy Award from Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> Private Ryan was like when when they called Shakespeare in Love, like that put a spotlight on Oscar campaigning, and 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 the behind the scenes to Oscar campaigning that may have been around sort of kind of, but that mm. was at the time the most ever spent in a campaign ever. Yeah, and prior but, to that, it was. Know, uh, let's say it was under the radar a little bit, right? I guess and the, under the radar, kind of yeah, uh, uh, yeah, was much more overt. The, the, <laughs> and this one just came. I mean, the amount of spending that that the Weinstein's and Miramax mm-hmm. uh, put in for the campaign, um, you know, DreamWorks was like they had to shell out more money for their campaign for mm-hmm. Private Ryan, and you know, he was he was doing things in 1998 that are way more relevant common, today. Right? And commonly, like the screeners, like mm-hmm. he, you know, unbeknownst to he sort of kind of did a sneak attack and sent screeners out mm-hmm. to people. So it's crazy when I, you know, when today we're taught, you know, we have the controversy about best song mm-hmm. and whatever. And the, like this sort of thing has been going on for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's um, that's why I'm saying like w- to say, oh, John Madden was standing up. No, he wasn't like nobody expected Shakespeare in Love to get this award, period. Like, I, it, I, I, so. I'll disagree slightly, only because uh, I, I don't remember it that way in my experience. I knew a lot of people that thought it was a really good movie and deserved those nominations. You can't expect that, that nobody thought it was a good movie as 13 noms. I didn't say that they didn't say it was a good movie. Uh-huh. I'm saying they didn't, they didn't think it, it was, it was not the fourth it was not the front runner for winning best picture that year. That's in, all that's what I'm saying. In hindsight so, looking back, do you still think it was stolen? Absolutely. I mean, it's, when I'm looking at a legacy, when I'm looking people still talk about Saving Private Ryan today. Mm-hmm. People don't so much talk about Shakespeare and Love as much as like we were talking about circles, and but in other like, circles yeah, they, and talk, like, they and don't talk about Saving Private Ryan. Like, and like I watch Saving mm-hmm. Private Ryan, but like I will watch this movie at least once a year. I'll watch Saving Private Ryan every two, three. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, they're both wonderful movies, and I'm not saying that Saving Private Ryan didn't like break boundaries or wasn't technically good or anything. But to me, it doesn't feel like an it doesn't feel like it was stolen. Mm-hmm. I feel like I love that it won Best Picture because to me it sh- it should get recognition and it it combines so many. It's an adaptation, but it's real people but romanticized and Mm -hmm. it's intellectual and it's smart and it's emotional and so to me it was just such a fulfilling movie that i would want it to win and like Mm -hmm. if they were if it was in the race right now for shakespeare in love and pope friend like my vote would be going for shakespeare in love so i would want it to win (laughs) yeah i kind of agree and i can understand why people might think shakespeare in love was a, a big surprise because if you think about it, Shakespeare in Love has does have a lot of comedy in this movie mm-hmm. and a lot of best picture n- n- winners are really more serious dramatic movies so I can see why that kind of snuck up on them but S- Saving Private Ryan it was very dramatic very heart wrenching kind of film and Shakespeare in Love is very pretty much the opposite it's very heartwarming and and happy and it makes you happy free. and yeah. worry about life so it was it's like fun. two different you know, realms and two different genres going head to head. Yeah, mm-hmm. two two completely different films. 
all you know and i don't i don't disagree with any any anything that you said i'm just going back you mm-hmm. we're turning the clocks back to 1998 mm-hmm. we're getting in that delorean and then <laughs> when you look at like, let's be honest again, did you really just want star trek to win <laughs> well yes it was not, uh, well i'll get back into that later for star trek insurrection but no, I mean, at the time when you had New York Times, AMC Film Site, Time Magazine, MTV, Hit Fix, mm-hmm. NPR, uh, Vulture. I mean, Vulture and NPR are still talking about Shakespeare and Love. And if you look on any, I'm like, I'm not making this up. If you the list go, you say you what Google, has been stolen and what. Yeah. Shake, and, and Shakespeare and Love is one of them. And then the movie that I was involved with, in a sense, is another one, Crash. Which people say that people took it away from Brokeback Mountain. So I understand being on that side of the fence, how, how you know how that feels. But if you look up or just Google, all you have to do is go Oscar campaign uh, controversy. Shakespeare in Love will come up in nine out of ten articles. So I mean, it really at 1998 when Saving Private Ryan was not given Best Picture like that was a big deal at that time and like i said there was a reason why it put it it put oscar campaigning in the spotlight it put it under the micro uh, under the microscope and it's when you're saying they were like the weinsteins were like the yankees of like mm-hmm. of of the academy awards they were being said that they were buying awards because of all the money that they spent that's either good or bad listen harvey weinstein that guy has done so much for the independent business mm-hmm. It's crazy, and, and and he's done a lot of good. And I would say, if he supports you, man, you don't have a better backer mm-hmm. than this guy. I mean, this guy has backed Kevin Smith, Quentin Tarantino, some of our great actors. And if he if he loves what you do, you've you've got the best man in the business in your corner. And I think in legacy times, when it comes to independent film, you know, there's a handful of names, and Harvey Weinstein will definitely be there. So you know when you look at all the quote unquote shenanigans that happened for Academy Awards in 1998, that was a big deal. And it's still being talked about Mm -hmm. today. Like NPR had within the past week, they talked about it and they linked to an article in Vulture magazine as well. So it's just very fascinating. And when you look at the Academy Awards today about how the Weinsteins are doing, like this year, they, you know, they, they're not, doing as well but judy dench Mm -hmm. uh is nominated so 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 we'll see what uh you know if the weinstein can pull his magic Mm -hmm. uh for it but uh yeah i mean what the weinsteins have accomplished with miramax and and the weinstein company it's just incredible incredible so regardless of shenanigans you give them credit for everything that they've accomplished and the great films that they've given us i'm not saying that shakespeare and love is not a great film but maybe in that year, for me anyways, it still should have gone to Private Ryan, but it opened up a can of worms and causes this discussion. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And it makes everything more heightened. I mean, everyone has their opinion, right? And I, that's why you hope that everyone's vote gets represented. And if you really feel passionate about a movie, then you will not be bought <laughs> by the campaigning. I don't know. Who knows? Well, the other side of the argument is that you know, smaller movies, independent movies, are going up against huge mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, blockbusters. Exactly. So that's one of the reasons they why they had to do that mm-hmm. uh, in there in, the, in the argument. I don't know how much of that is true, but I understand the argument. But again, the movie made a hundred mil too. Yeah. So again, for for a movie whose widest was mm-hmm. oh, just a, a hair over two thousand, mm-hmm. that's really solid. Like that's good, bi- you know, especially yeah. for Miramax, that's good business for them. Right. So I have a question. A lot of people must have liked it. Yeah, absolutely. The hundred million is to date, correct? Do we yeah, have? Do you by any chance have the numbers of what it made that year? Yeah, it's a hundred. It made a hundred million. Oh, during that mm-hmm. year. Okay. Yeah, it was the like that year. Let's um, we'll start off with with um. It's, sorry about that. We can start off. Shakespeare in Love was the number eighteen movie of mm-hmm. nineteen ninety eight. So, uh, and it, with 100 million, 317. Uh, <laughs> before it was The Rugrats and Prince of Egypt, <laughs> which is a DreamWorks movie. Both of those were great movies. Too. I really liked The Prince of Egypt. So, in, really in, in, in that year, <laughs> that year alone, we had Saving Private Ryan was number one, 216 million. Armageddon was number two, which you would think maybe a Michael Bay movie would, mm-hmm. would go over a very difficult to watch, like, 
you know, a war movie, but Armageddon was number two. Number three was something about Mary. So that's <laughs> something that, that really happens at 176 million. Um, a Bug's Life, Pixar, that, that was their second movie that did 162. That was four. Waterboy was number five. That's when Adam Sandler was still. Uh, right I was going to tell you the exact yep. same <laughs> Dr. Doolittle was number six. Rush Hour was number seven. Uh, Deep Impact, another uh, asteroid movie, was mm. number seven. Or, I mean, number eight. And Godzilla was number nine. And Patch Adams wow. was number 10. So oh. that's what the movie landscape was in 1998. Eesh crazy <laughs> but if you think about Drugs it a lot of those movies are comedies yeah i mean something about mary patch adams mm-hmm. i mean granted patch adams is a little bit more dramatic but there was a lot of comedy in all those movies yep. lethal weapon people were in a good mood rush hour <laughs> all those are great movies mm-hmm. uh, you know great run well movies. godzilla's not that great of a movie i don't think Waterboy. boy uh, I would hold up there. And <laughs> Armageddon. Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> right, Something about Mary's great. Movies. They're all it's fun movies. <laughs> Populist made for the masses, as we were just saying. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so it had good competition. And even when it came out that weekend, I mean, this is what this is what it went up against in eight locations. Star Trek, number one movie that, that weekend. Star Trek Insurrection did 22 million. A Bug's Life. Uh, had come out that had been out for four weeks, and that was number two. Jack Frost, which is a Michael Keaton oh, becomes yeah. a oh, snowman, snowman movie. Oh, <laughs> my God. That was the number three movie. Horrible. Yeah, I'm sorry. that's Enemy. a sad movie too. You like that movie? No, I'm just. I was surprised that you said. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I've seen sorry, that movie too many times. Oh, we're not getting Michael Keaton on anytime soon. I guess. Uh, Enemy of the State. Uh, was number Smith, four. Right. Uh, the Rugrats movie uh, was number five. Waterboy was number six, wow. and at that point, okay. it had been out for six weeks. So, I mean, that that's the movie landscape in 1998. And when you look at, again, the, the highest, like Star Trek was 2,620 locations. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, again, we, we are... We're moving to that point where the saturation, like once we get into the, the 2000s, I mean, the megaplexes are really starting to come into play. So now you go from a release of 2000, like this is 2,620 locations for Star Trek. The last Star Trek movie I'm willing to bet was 3,500. I mean, so in you're bringing in lots more dollars. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, that's why I love looking back to see how, how, how the business of distribution has evolved and, and what it does, and and again, for a movie like Shakespeare in Love to make a hundred million, that's pretty big. Uh, that's a pretty big deal. Because how much? Let's see. What was uh, <clears throat> Catherine Bigelow's Oscar? Hurt Locker. Hurt Locker. Hurt Locker. Yeah. What did that make? <laughs> Four, five. I mean, it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, even Philomena, which we were talking about, yeah. as a, you know, so uh, for any independent movie like that to 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 make a hundred million back in mm-hmm. 1998 in and your first go out is eight locations, and the highest you get is just a little over mm-hmm. two thousand. That's so, a good stretch. Yeah. People like it. It had lo- well. That's the other thing too. So smart Legs. investment by the Weinstein. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, that yeah. campaigning paid off. Yeah, time. yeah. And think about the legs. Yeah. I mean, what movies today? I mean, I can't think of any mm-hmm. that that, that would stick eleven yeah. weeks mm-hmm. is when you hit your peak. Yeah. Like yes, that- after being out for eleven weeks, that's that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. There's a few I feel like so I'm like trying to think about nowadays if we do things things and like award seasons will bring out peaks later sure. so like and it's often the more more art house films so for instance like Gloria mm-hmm. Gloria came out on I think a DVD like um, over a month ago mm-hmm. and it's a documentary about backup singers and it's getting a huge flux of people and honestly I think might even be hitting its top seats now because they had to bring it back to theaters right to have more people see it and get a viewing on it so i think that's where you're going to find those movies the long runnings that are the ones people literally have no idea about and then some award brings mm-hmm. them back into the eye yeah i mean you know your art house fair if it's good will will typically can stay in an art house like a landmarks of the world your your lemleys and whatnot they can stay in theaters you know number one they need the product so it can stay in theaters for a while. Mm-hmm. But again, when you look at a Shakespeare in Love and what it did, you know, for, for coming out in December and then in February you hit 2000. So you're up there, so you're still making money and then all in you make 100 million and you're out at least through Oscars. 
you know, up until that point. And so you're bringing, you're generating money. The other thing, too, to note is that the DVD window was a hell of a lot different back yeah, in 1998 totally than it is today. Well, mm-hmm. is, is there a DVD window? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be like three months. <laughs> supposed to be. You know, but now with On Demand yeah, and, yeah, and Day and Date, you know, that window has, again, that window has changed mm-hmm. distribution practice uh, immensely. Immensely. And that's why I say, like, if Shakespeare and Love were released today, I think they would have had to have taken a different tack oh, as sure. far as marketing but the movie. I think we could also, I'll make the argument then, that it's because, you know, for an Oscar nom, or I should say for a movie to to receive an Oscar nomination for Best Picture, for me, it has to operate on all cylinders. Every sure. department has to be doing well. And this movie does. I mean, mm-hmm. and I think it's got legs or mm-hmm. had legs because it, was, it started out small. But people just of course it has legs. It's here yeah. today, and now to be these are Valentine's yeah, but, movies. But I think it's not just a testament to the um, to the campaigning, but it just no, it's just. A- Dead solid movie. To the movie. No, absolutely. And again, making Shakespeare accessible yeah. to people, having it be a comedy and having a romance and having it be light and, you know, people can gravitate towards that. And that's what, you know, when you get good word of mouth yeah. like that, mm-hmm. you know, other than it just being a Shakespeare right. movie, when you say, hey, it's Shakespeare, but it's fun and I loved it and it had this great romance and it had this in it, yeah. that perpetuates your box office. Yeah, and, and, and the it, other thing that's interesting about it, because it's a period piece, it is timeless in a sense. It doesn't, sure. you know, you're watching it again, it doesn't feel like dated in any way. I mean, because yeah. it's no. already dated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and they didn't. It's a wonderful thing about period. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah. You know, and, and they may have, and again, I don't know because I didn't grow up in that era. Uh-huh. You mm-hmm. know, they may have softened the language up a little so that it's, you know, understandable. So less body? Oh, but, oh but okay. That, so. Yeah, right. But, but it makes... Again, it's just all about it makes it accessible, it right. makes it fun. It's well, not like a spoonful I, I of medicine. I think they did a great job mirroring what Shakespeare was supposed to be back when it was written. It was mm-hmm. accessible yeah. because that everybody yeah. understood mm-hmm. the references and the language and everything. And so they yeah. did the same thing to a modern uh, yeah. ear, so to speak. Yeah. I, I agree, especially with the writing, because Shakespeare writes an iambic pentameter for all of his stories. And that's, I think, to the normal ear now, that'd be still hard to understand. But <laughs> yeah. but now and with Shakespeare and how they wrote it out, it was understandable in a way that audience could still comprehend everything that was going on, even though they it was a little the the, the writing was kind of in reflection of the iambic pentameter, right. but we still understood everything the the characters and the plot twists and stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't as confusing as a regular right. Shakespeare yeah. story would be. Right. So, yeah, and so even the writing was brilliantly done. Yeah, it was it was very smart. Uh, those guys, Tom Stoppard, mm-hmm. was one. I mean, and this guy's been around. I mean, between being part of Brazil Empire of the Sun, Anna Karenina, Shakespeare in Love, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, now you have no, you know, they won, I believe, for best. I forget what it was called back then, but it wasn't like a best original. It wasn't best original screenplay. It was. It had some other long name, but. Really? Yeah, it was. Uh, hold on one second. Gameplay. It was called trivia. <laughs> yeah, it was like call, it wasn't. It was like I, I shortened it to best original screenplay. Mark Norman, wow. Tom Stoppard, and and you know what? No qualms. I mean, I agree. They wrote a very original screenplay that, like we talked at the beginning you don't think of the Shakespeare show, should get some credit yeah, for this? shouldn't it be an adapted <laughs> screenplay? I mean, I I would vote for uh, either way. It would have worked for it's, me. It's, maybe it should be nominated in both. <laughs> That's what I mean. I mean, either way, it would have worked for me. I would have been okay. What's he going to sue for royalties at this point? I mean, <laughs> what? Uh, his estate. His estate. <laughs> Does he have one still? Oh, the Stratford on Avon's one. Stratford, Stratford Stratton, upon Avon. I could... Yeah, I think that, you know, but I, I don't know. I mean, they use obviously Romeo and Juliet, mm-hmm. and you're hearing that, but I think the, the whole Not plot around Just Romeo it. and Juliet. You had Twelfth Night in there, Two Gentlemen of Verona, and but, like but all the these play, Shakespeare references throughout. Which makes it brilliant. But they weren't. But we we're all focused around Romeo and Juliet and yes. how that movie came mm-hmm. together. And what I think is, without again, without having any, I mean, I don't know what kind of reference they could use for how he wrote. I mean, this is basically a fictional account mm-hmm. as to how he came about inspiration. being inspiration. You know, mm-hmm. the but inspiration really- for this, and that to me is what's brilliant. So they thought about all this stuff, threw in all those Shakespearean references, but I, it didn't. We don't know that it happened that way because yeah. it probably didn't. But who cares yeah. for this? Because you're along for the ride and you're going, wow. If if it did go down this way, well, that's sort. Of, I had a good time. Pretty cool. Oh, I completely agree <laughs> with that. That it's a fictional account. But I wonder if like 
if you took this into percentages and went through the script line mm -hmm. by line, how many of these are taken from plays and how oh, many yeah. of them are original mm -hmm. sentences? Because between the double dialogue mm -hmm. of the <laughs> inspirational scenes and the translation to the stage, you've pretty much in accomplished almost the entire play of Romeo and Juliet and all these additional works and sonnet references mm -hmm. and yeah. Christopher Marlowe, all Christopher of this. Marlowe. So it's like, I just wonder if you like divided it up, like highlight everything in red that was yeah. quoted. How or, or do you what even the, the scenes, I mean, like the yeah. scene when, when uh, he's visiting uh, Gwyneth for the first time and she, the nurse is calling her. And, you know, all those things. I don't know if they're the exact lines, but you're getting the entire they're, scene. They're, yeah. yeah. And, and even her mother, the, her, yeah. the scene with her mother that's taken. Yeah. Um, scenes with, I believe, the dowry scene mm. is from another play yeah. that I can't recall about um, how much they're worth. Mm -hmm. and All of that is if not direct quote well, it's referential it's, for sure it, exactly and so how much of that yeah. really like obviously the original parts have to be where you have like the Henslow and people like talking about this exact production or whatnot well, but it's all the plotting as yeah. well i mean the plotting is original i mean mm -hmm. that that you oh, know and the combination how they put, how they, put it yeah, yeah. so Definitely. again that's why i think that uh, they 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 deserved for best mm -hmm. original screenplay at that time i think they did a fantastic job and it still flows and and but again most key is yeah. that it's accessible i think that you know your college kid can watch it and your high school high school student can watch it if the parents going to let them watch a rated r movie but that's fine. I mean, like, and they'll get it. Mm -hmm. and, it's rated R. True. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Boobies. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They're, they're yeah. Really Gwyneth Paltrow. How do you not Gwyneth Paltrow? I don't remember seeing Yeah. 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 She's very nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, well, I guess. The version I, I saw recently is, was on the, TV. So I just mean. really want, mm -hmm. I want, I wish they had a credit and then we could like all make the joke that William Shakespeare has an Oscar and then I'd be happy. <laughs> that's, that's really yeah. what I want. So. We should have, Shakespeare should have won a postmortem. <laughs> wait a minute. Yeah. Didn't the, uh, <laughs> wait, didn't, Did he uh, Fred, wait, didn't, uh. Did he win one? Who? Didn't, didn't the, um. Uh, the, the most popular Romeo and Juliet movie. Didn't that win an Oscar? A oh, Basil Man's no. version? Or which one? You're no, talking about no. Romeo and Juliet? Yeah, yeah, Romeo and Juliet. Olivia Hussey and... Yeah, 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 that's yeah. the one. Like Franco Zeffirelli. Did it win? Franco Zeffirelli, that's yeah. the guy I was uh, thinking of. I don't know that. Didn't... Uh, let's look it up, oh, because for some reason I'm thinking computers. that may have, I thought... Uh, can I just Google has William Shakespeare? Baz Luhrmann. Oh, good God, hey, child. There's a lot of oh, Romeo and Juliet films out yeah, there. Yeah, but I said the best one. I didn't hear it. <laughs> wow. Goodness. You're, you know what? Careful, I like Dimitri, that your disdain is showing. I like Baz Luhrmann's version. <laughs> uh, well, the other thing I wanted to point out just about the writing, just I, we've been talking all kinds of things about how well it, I, I even like the little moments. Just Maybe it's because I'm a writer, but every time Will would sit down to write, he'd do that little you know routine the, that he had. He'd spin, spin in circle, he'd spin, and he'd throw all right. that stuff. I go, yeah, yeah, I get that, the ritual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Even there's the little moments there. And I don't know if that was written into it or if that was just something he did as an actor. That was his choice or whatever, but it was a nice one nonetheless. Uh, yeah, and I going back to the, the combination of the, the little references thrown here and there when they're kissing on stage for the first time, uh -huh. when uh, it, it, Romeo and Juliet has to kiss and then... He uh, will sees that they're kissing and he's not yeah, happy with yeah, it. And he's exactly. like, no, no, not quite. Allow me. <laughs> uh, I <laughs> did find it. Again. That was brilliant. Uh, and it, it won for best cinematography mm -hmm. and it won for best costume design. But it didn't And it win. was nominated for best picture. But it was but, it, but Shakespeare was yeah. nominated because this was Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and Franco Zeffirelli was nominated for best director. Yeah. So he like, got nominated. He went, I don't know. Uh, uh, Wait, well, he wrote it. I mean... <laughs> I don't think it was an adaptation. I mean, it doesn't say anything about writing. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. There was no like best original screenplay. Or well, it, it says. Well, it says <laughs> writer would need to be. Yeah, it says writers William Shakespeare, Franco Brasati, Mar. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they made. You know, they had to make a screenplay. Sure, so to absolutely. Speak, but. William Shakespeare is the they main. They didn't critic. win that I'm, one. I'm sure they didn't do a lot of changing of the dialogue. <laughs> no, no, I, no, not that one. Mm -hmm. And again, if if we if you can find it, I don't. Yeah. It's much better than the Bos Lerman <laughs> version. That's it's the actually, one I have on my computer. It's actually Bas probably Lerman. the... Um, um, which one? The, the, it's probably the most faithful adaptation... Yeah, I think it was. ...of I mean, Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. I mean, it's the one that, again, that I was brought up 
mm-hmm. of like that's probably the one that I saw in high school. Mm-hmm. That's whatnot, the one I yeah. have. Mm-hmm. So look at that. And so. Olivia Hussey. Yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. So, I, can, can we talk about the editing in this film? Because no, I we thought want it was to. so brilliantly well done how they <clears> just <throat> smoothly transition from scene to scene, from on stage to off stage to behind stage. And it was just so perfectly crafted that we there were moments in this film you couldn't tell if they were on stage mm-hmm. or if they were yeah, saying their thing just, being like it was very well blocked too, yes I agree. It was, yeah it was, it was theater-esque in its blocking yeah. in some respects of course it should have been but anyway and yeah. and now in, in the scene that you're talking about i know exactly the one it's when they were it started off backstage mm-hmm. uh during the play but when the camera pulls back they're actually on they're stage. They're actually in front of the audience. <clears throat> but I, I, for me, like, you know, I brought up, I mean, David Gamble's, I, I mean, I noticed it. Mm-hmm. Watching it, my favorite scene was the scene where they're rehearsing the, um, the yes. balcony. Right. Mm-hmm. And that is a scene which kept on going from the balcony to the bedroom. Mm-hmm bedroom back to the balcony and did you ever get the, lost though right no no i know isn't that Never. interesting it was it's brilliant, brilliant. And, and the reason why brilliant. i asked that is because I'm, I'm just thinking about that and i was coming comparing that with anonymous you know the movie that was done a couple yeah. years ago about shakespeare and whether or not he actually wrote the things and everybody got lost in that movie especially in the first act because like what the hell where are we what who's talking and and in nowhere in shakespeare in love were you ever lost and no. where you were not at what all was going on it was seamless. See, mm-hmm. very yes. much so. And I, I had to look up, you know, David Gamble, and I'm like, mm-hmm. this guy did an amazing job uh, on that movie. Mm-hmm. I, I thought just that flow and the way that that whole scene was, let's say, choreographed. Right. Mm-hmm. And, well, and, and and I will give him that nod. I'll also say whoever wrote it because I'm, they had to be thinking that ahead of time or, or right. whoever blocked it or staged it, it you know, right. and, and whether that's the director or the cinematographer because <clears throat> all the camera movement and all that stuff was working all, again, on all cylinders. Everybody very collaborative. Yeah. It was precise yeah. but soft. Yeah. And it was that soft flow. Yeah, you didn't notice it. It, it wasn't like in the way at all. It was an artistic line and yeah. I, it's done very well. Yeah, it's done in a romantic way. And then, and even that scene in compared to the fight scene when they have on theater when they're mm-hmm. you know throwing around s- swords and you know fighting each other and that, falling like, off the stage it, that was awesome <laughs> it choreographed well yeah. as well because they go be uh, underneath the stage and mm-hmm. then you see the chaos on top of it just like even that was mm-hmm. fun to watch now here's something that i just found very interesting about mark norman mm-hmm. well first i'll go to Regarding Shakespeare in Love, uh, writer Mark Norman uh, credits getting the idea for the film when his son Zachary called him from Boston University mm-hmm. and suggested doing something on William Shakespeare <laughs> as a young man in Elizabeth, Elizabethan theater. Uh, it took two years for Norman to come up with the idea of having Shakespeare struggling with writer's block in Romeo and yeah. Juliet. And, what a great, but it's just a great idea. idea. It, and yeah. as a writer, yeah, like I mean, again, it is. It's a great. It's like. We always think William Shakespeare because none of us could mm-hmm. say that we've met him no. or know his personality. But we can say that he's extremely prolific, or at right. least based on the correct his portfolio and <laughs> being a writer. But but nobody ever thought of yeah. well, how was he if he yeah. he must have gotten writer's block exactly. at some point, right? Yeah. yeah. How did he get out of that? I think that it. That I think that great. the fact that that one like niche is so in a way streamlined it let him tackle this very mm-hmm. complicated world because if you went into this being like i'm gonna try and combine all yeah. of shakespeare's mm-hmm. plays and works how am i going to do this right but it really was just yeah. he took this one seed and it l- let him yeah. access and it's such a simple little thing. idea shakespeare has writer's block yes and it starts from yeah. there yeah yeah and it's Wonderful. and it's, it's like trying to pick a lock <clears throat> with a red herring yeah. but 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 let's find out where this uh, his screenplay before Shakespeare in Love mm. was Cutthroat Island. Interesting. <laughs> he also did a, bra- a, a a Charles Bronson movie called Breakout. I know that. Yeah. And and he Based wrote on a book. He wrote She's for uh, he wrote for uh, Mission Impossible the television series. So nice. I mean, isn't that funny? Like wow. you go for like the movie yeah. before was one of the biggest all time Hollywood flops. Of all time, yeah. and now you're getting the Academy mm-hmm. Award for Best Original Screenplay. Yeah, that's true. Again, it's great. Yeah, yeah. So it's hope. great. It's a, but you know. his script wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. So. Well, for Cutthroat Island, it was not that good. 
Yeah, I don't think it was a bad <laughs> script. I mean, they had many more, m- many more issues on that. But, but, yeah, but <laughs> next year's Valentine's Day episode. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, so yeah, there you go. Yeah, it was very well written, and like I said, no, mm-hmm. no qualms. It being an original screenplay, absolutely. I really would love to know the, the, what Tom Stoppard brought and where it was and how. It, I just want to know that story. I want to know how that evolved. That particular script, just as much as I, it was fun to see how Shakespeare and Love evolved as we were mm-hmm. watching the movie. I want to see how the script evolved because I would love to know how that happened. How he, I agree. That would be very interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll, we'll call him up, get him in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's ever gonna we're gonna find that out. All right. Well, what's left? Anything else we want to talk about? Well, I mean, do we? I mean, Mark, Mark, uh, we were talking about editing, and and Mark mm-hmm. Gamble. Went on. I mean, he did Veronica Gurren, so he got to work with Kate Blanchett. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Shop Girl, which is a Steve Martin movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the Sight, Shakespeare in Love. Uh, then he did he did a lot of um, miniseries. Uh, they seem to be like BBC Armistead Maupin's Tale of the City. So the city. that's that's American. <clears throat> and so yes, yeah, so all these movies he did. You know, I mean, Shop Girl. It's listing him in, in two thousand and five mm-hmm. as the last movie that he edited. Mm-hmm. So again, when we're talking Good movie. about yeah. And, but when we're talking about working on all cylinders, yeah, like a lot of these people that we just talked about, never really after this movie never went on to bigger and better things, so to speak. You know, I mean, the writer didn't really do much after that. Um, I can't say uh, about um, the director John Madden, like what he did that that would have rivaled this movie. You know, mm-hmm. so. We had lightning in a bottle with Shakespeare in Love. I mean, it really, you know, when you look at the people that were those creative types, you know, and then, of course, look what happened to Ben Affleck. <clears throat> ben Affleck at that time was really going down that path of being one of the most hated actors, people in Hollywood, because it was after Gwyneth Paltrow. At some point or another, he ended up with, with, with J-Lo and... Geely. Geely. He ended up in Geely. Yeah. yeah. Daredevil? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Daredevil, like, like I said, but, 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 you know, he's turned it around, and um, except uh, you know, he still has everybody now on him for Batman. For like, Batman, Jesus, I know guy, he can't get a break. Is, yeah, exactly, he why can't get a break. So this bunch guy. of haters against Ben Affleck. I mean, yeah, what the hell? Yeah, I mean, so it's, it, but you know, Gwyneth Paltrow is very happy with uh, the Coldplay guy there, and <laughs> and she'll do the Iron Man movies because that's a good paycheck for her. Mm-hmm. Tom Wilkinson can, you know, he he still is. In, Tom Wilkinson will well, always work. He's always working. Uh, always. He's in the bedroom. Remember oh, the bedroom? Yeah. I mean, he's he was nominated for that. It's really nice to see all these actors in this movie the supporting cast as mm-hmm. well that like they've all have still they're still working and they're still doing amazing films yeah. nowadays Jeffrey i mean Rush judy did dench just rush. did film film and jeffrey rush they're all working so yeah. it's yeah. nice to see even they had like smaller parts in this movie that they're still flourishing as mm-hmm. actors um I, I would love to talk about the the music a little bit in this movie um uh, I believe it was uh, Stephen Warbeck. I mean, I have the sound check to show you. In love. <laughs> and it's just the, the violins and the music and the piccolos that are playing underneath. It just, it really reflected the Elizabethan, el- mm-hmm. that it, era, then? Elizabethan era the, um, um, back then. And Here it is. Thank like you. How they used it. Um, like the first time when you're opening up the, the music, it's, mm. It's building, and you're right. you can tell it's a romance. And then when they're using it at the that that party, at, um, that dinner party that they were having for the first time, then you hear the same music again on the stage. So right. they use it in different ways yeah. throughout, and it just really reflected the whole tone of the film. Although I, I will say this, um, that Game of Thrones has affected me uh, officially now because mm-hmm. there was the scene. It was the first scene that took place, sort of kind of in the pub. Are we well, talking Game of Thrones or, Liz- or no? I'm talking Shakespeare and okay. Love. They're Go in ahead. the they're in the pub, and for some reason, I was like, I just had this feeling of a red wedding coming on, <laughs> and I was like, oh, because <laughs> they captured like that scene in the pub. Number one, it's very funny and, and everything, but it was just like because there was the music in the background. I was like, oh, I just got a flashback to the red wedding. So, but. Uh, the music in that scene too was pretty good, and then yeah, the and fight breaks out. The dancing, and, <laughs> yeah, and when they're rehearsing on stage, yeah. gentlemen on stage, lady downstage, you know. Yeah. That it's still fun. It's used in a romantic way. It's used in a comedic way. It's sure. used in a historical way. Yes, yeah. so, exactly. Yeah. So, so, I loved it. I love the music. And, and just in case anybody was wondering, so after Shakespeare in Love, he did Captain Crowley's Mandolin, uh, Proof, uh, Kill Shot. 
the debt the best exotic marigold hotel mm. and he's uh he he, he uh, directed the pilot of masters of sex good for him because yeah. now he'll continue to get for every other episode he'll continue to get a paycheck for that there you go <laughs> so good for him that's what john madden's been up to yeah. since shakespeare and love he's doing fine there we go yeah yes quite well so let's do our last thoughts um (laughs) last thoughts i know that this i if you haven't seen this movie i'm just listening to us talk about it go see it um i think it will it's timeless for the last three years and i think that not only is it good to keep shakespeare in the modern eye because i think it's wonderful works but to find new interpretations of it and to explore that era is always wonderful so i will continue watching this movie and i hope you guys do uh, I agree. Um, if you don't like Shakespeare, I definitely would recommend start with Romeo and Juliet. It'll help you. It's a lighter film. A lot of more people can relate to that story. And it'll help you get into Shakespeare, which is, it helped me get into Shakespeare a, a lot more than Macbeth and all the other ones that he's written. And this is just a nice ode to that time period, to Shakespeare, and just like the art that was the whole Elizabethan area back in theater and stage and how the writing, I, I think it was just amazing and they did it tastefully in this movie. I'm, I'm happy that because of this show um, I went to go revisit it. So I got to see it with basically a fresh pair of eyes. Uh, I looked at it in a whole new light and uh, you know I have a different appreciation for it than say when I saw it in 1998, which I didn't hate it. I didn't dislike the movie at all. I remember enjoying it, but I watching it now i appreciate it for different things so uh I, yeah it's definitely uh, i'm glad that we were able to do it today so it's good stuff for me it's one of those movies that every time i see it i always enjoy it and i always there's something new about it that i go oh, i never even really paid attention to that before so it's one of those i always like to go back and see i think it's seamless it's well crafted it's a movie that's uh, deserving of its nominations and the music is swelling. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Academy so, hook. Uh, so and it's so much more than just an adaptation of William Shakespeare. It, it yeah. could be any writer. Uh, but the fact that True. it is is even more rich. Uh, so it's yeah. rich. It's fun. It's, it's just a great movie. Yeah. So do watch it. stuff. All right. And happy That's Valentine's it. Day. Happy Valentine's. Valentine's. That is happy our VD Valentine's Day. version of Anatomy of a Movie. There you thank go. you for tuning in. <laughs> we'll talk to you next time. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the rest of the Anatomy of a Movie staff, we would like to thank you for listening and subscribing to the show. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email or tweet us. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been Anatomy of a Movie. Thanks for watching Anatomy of a Movie on YouTube. For more on your favorite movies, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to let us know what you think in our comment section below here. Bye.